I'd like to make a, a very big announcement that I am come to the United States to serve you. I've come here on a mission from God to bring a great awakening. And since I've arrived, God has had me on stage with Eric and Laura Trump and Mike Lindell and Clay Clark and just awesome people. And I really feel uh, welcomed here and I feel like God has opened great doors here. So I look forward to seeing you at some of the end time conferences. I'm gonna be coming to John Kilpatrick's conference in Alabama. And if you're a pastor and you need a speaker and you need someone to speak about family or biblical justice or faith and healing, I can do that. I know what it's like to pastor. I know what it's like to try to motivate the people to be faithful in their faith and serving. I understand that. So I can come in and help you as a guest minister. You just need to go to our website, discoverchurch.online, and book a time, okay? We are filling up in our calendar, so please book a time. I want to make a special uh, offer, and I don't think I can do this for many churches, but I'd like to help any church that has been struggling, was uh, impacted by COVID or a loss of a pastor. I see so many transitions going on all through the 50 states since I've come here, and I can see that there are churches that are lacking in leadership, and I mean pastoral leadership, having a bishop over a church. If I can be a temporary pastor to help you through a transition period or a difficult time, I am available to help. I obviously can't help too many, but if you are in need of that, uh, contact us, and I am here to serve you and your church family. And we have also, the other big announcement is, we now have established a physical church in the United States. We're in Fort Myers, Florida, and you are welcome to look us up and to join our service on Sunday mornings. It's very exciting. We have a great a core team that is just starting the pre-launch and you can come and be part of the pre-launch and soon we will have an official opening of Discomfort Church in the USA. The first thing I want to say is happy 2024. I'm addressing you from Florida, USA. It's a pleasure to be back in the States. I feel like I've been gone a long, long time to come back to a completely different nation. The Lord said the verse, the scripture for 2024 is Revelation 2.4. Do you know what Revelation 2.4 says? No, let's take a look at it. Revelation 2.4 is for 2024. I'll give you a hint. We got to come back to first things. And we got to put things in order. The United States is in the condition that it's in because things are out of order. And nobody seems to want to put things in order anymore. They want, they want to sexualize children. They want women to be men. They want parents to be friends. They want everything to be out of order. And this is a very big deal because the Bible says that whenever people stepped out of their place, that's when they got into the most trouble. You know that? That's all King Saul did. Remember that King Saul had a big excuse. He was waiting for the prophet Samuel to arrive. The Bible says that the prophet, prophet Samuel did not come at the appointed time. He was delayed for whatever reason we don't know. And because of that, Saul took it upon himself to step out of his place. And then he, who's a king, started acting like he's a priest. Well, we got that going on today. And what was the reaction from God? God rejected Saul. It says, you will be king no more. I would have established you forever, you and your descendants. But you will be king no more. Why? Because you, you didn't reflect me. He didn't reflect my heart for peace and harmony and order. So Saul was greatly offended by that and pretended to be anointed, but he was not anointed. And I think that's a lot of what's going on in the churches now. There's a lot of people that look anointed. They sound anointed. They're still singing very well, but the anointing is not there. It's the anointing that will cover it. It's the anointing that fills the temple with his glory. We need his anointing. We're not any other religion. So Revelation 2 says, some things are first, some things are second. Don't make something first, second, or last. So he says this in Revelation chapter 2, one of the seven churches of Revelation is the first one. In verse 3, Jesus commends them and says, You have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, Here's verse 4, 2-4, four, 
Revelation 2, 4, nevertheless. You don't like to hear that when a boss says that, right? You did a good job, nevertheless. Boy, outstanding sale performance, nevertheless. You ain't getting that promotion. Yeah, you don't want to hear that from the Lord. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Some things ought to be first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Interesting, first love goes with first works. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So what is this first love that Jesus wants from us? I'm sure there are many answers. I've got seven of them. Things that I think of when we're first born again. One of the things that we just fall in love about Jesus. What happens? Well, one of the things Jesus gives us a clue in Mark 11, verse 17. Jesus was equally upset in Mark 11 as he was in Revelation 2. And, and he taught them, the Bible says in verse 17, he taught them, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. So first love has to include putting God's house first. It has to include making prayer first. And when we get out of bed, our knees should hit the ground. And we should say at least good morning, Holy Spirit. Acknowledge that he's there. Acknowledge the third person of the Trinity lives inside of us. So first things first. First things first. We got to come back to first love, first works. At that moment, when we're first born again, we fall in love with Jesus and we have this love deposited in our hearts. One is the love for the word. The love for the word. Read the Bible every day. One thing you'll get from Discover Church, better than anything I can preach, any sermon that you might remember or forget, I will uh, create a culture where we love the word of God first. Together, we're going to do that. We're going to read the Bible every day. We're going to finish reading the whole Bible every year. Do you know that the majority of preachers have not done that? Yeah. So we're going to come back to a love for the Word. The Bible says, whatever is the first of your productivity, give him the first fruits. So I remember almost 15, maybe even 20 years ago, time flies, but I would say around 2005, that's that's 19 years ago. Time flies. I was in Japan, and a very famous preacher came from America, Dallas, Texas, and spoke. And I didn't really know him at that time, but, you know, everybody's heard of Robert Morris and Gateway Church. They got campuses everywhere, big church in Dallas. Beautiful place. I had a tour. But at that time, he was speaking, and Robert Morris has to always speak on tithing. Always talks about tithing. I think every service, he has to preach about tithing. Because if people's heart is into money and not into God, you're never going to get it. Let's say that you hear of a mission to some remote part in eastern India. You see the suffering, the needs, the, there's a bunch of local people that want to study the, the Bible. Or they, they go hungry. Well, that touches you emotionally for a moment. But you know what? You won't think about them longer than a week or two. But I tell you what, if God touches your heart and says, you sow a thousand dollar seed to East India and you're going to feed a hundred people with a thousand dollars. You can feed a hundred people for like a month because we're doing that right now. You'll be praying for them night and day. You'll be checking your WhatsApp, your Telegram. What's the news? What's going on over there? Are they free from the persecution? Are they dying? What's happening? What are the Hindus doing to them? You're going to care because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So Robert Morris has a, has a, a track record for being very strong on preaching about the tithe. And I didn't know him, and we you know, were all pastors at that time, and so I went and got my tray of Japanese food. I sat next to him. And all these Japanese pastors are like flocking around him, you know, in a big circle. They all want his attention. I didn't really know. And um, I said to him, I said, Pastor Robert, did you, uh, have you heard about first fruits? 
that what he was saying during the sermon, and it's, it gets translated in Japanese, is he says, you have to first, whenever you make money, you have to first give the tithe. You have to give the tithe first. And he said that you must give the tithe first, then the rest is blessed. And you will see, you can prove God herewith. He will not open you the windows of heaven. It says that in Malachi 3. So I went up and, and in a meek spirit, I wasn't correcting or anything, but this is the beginning of my prophetic anointing, by the way. I said, Pastor, have you heard of first fruits? And back then, nearly 20 years ago, he gave me an answer. He said, no. I said, well, the Bible says the first thing to give is not the tithe. The first thing when you have a harvest is the first fruit. So what's the tithe? The tithe is not the first fruit. The tithe is the tenth. So what you have here then, let's say that you're a farmer. It's very easy when you're a farmer. You, you make fruits. The fruit of your labor. You tilt the soil, you farm, you fertilize, you try to get rid of all the pests. You keep watering, take care of it, protect your tree. And then you get a harvest. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, ten. Okay, the table allows me to, to do ten. You see that? I scoot these over so it's nice and pretty for you to see. There you go. What the Bible teaches is you give the first as first fruits. After that, it's all yours to keep until you get to the tenth. The tenth is the tithe. And every time you make another 10, let's say you go to 20 fruits, the next 10th is the tithe. You make 30 fruits, the 30th, the next 10th is the tithe. Well, I didn't hear Pastor Robert Morris contact me or anything after that, but lo and behold, after that meeting in Japan, I heard Robert Morris teach on first fruits. Which goes to show what? A few things. Number one, such a humble man. I was a nobody. Nobody knew who I was. But I, he must have listened to that. He probably forgot who I am. But he listened to that and he went and asked the Holy Spirit and searched the Word of God. And, and we don't say the first thing to give is the tithe. Actually, the tithe is always the tenth. The first is the first. And it's called first fruits. And in modern day, it's your first paycheck, first rental income, first windfall, first payout, first anything we give to God. And there's a whole study. There's a whole book, you know, in the Midrash, there's a whole book called First Fruits. It was such a big subject. They asked Jesus about it. How much is First Fruits? They didn't ask whether we give First Fruits. They just asked how much. And it varied from 140th to 160th. And Jesus settled that. And I'll teach you that another time. But it was around, basically, you work 40 to 52 weeks out of the year, right? Most people, if they take a four-week vacation, they work 48 weeks out of the year. So one week's income, one fiftieth, was called first fruits. And that's what it was about. So uh, Robert Morris, I hear now, teaches that. I won't take credit for it, but I remember that conversation very clearly. And he now teaches it, so he's a very humble man. And... The other point for us to take from that is we're always learning. You can be used by God to build a mega church, but you still have to learn. So the order of your finances, your wealth, you don't have to do it. But if you want to do it in God's order, that's how it works. And he commands blessings on that. When we obey, it's such a small thing to do to obey God. Such a tiny thing that God asks us to do. Give me the first I test my children sometimes like that. I buy them something they want. They want an ice cream. Can, can Pampa have some? Oh, they go, mm, like that. I see, oh, you love the ice cream too much. You love the gift more than the giver. That's not good anymore, right? So I have to take that stinginess out of them because they would grow up to be bad people. So I have to test that. God tests us with something so basic. When we get something of financial value that's first, give it to Him. The rest is yours to enjoy until you get to the tenth. After you start again, He doesn't even ask for the rest of the first. There's no more other first. First is first. After that, every tenth belongs to God. You make 10,000, 
a thousand belongs to you. A hundred thousand, ten thousand belongs to you. A million, a hundred thousand belongs to you. Ten million, let's believe God for a great financial transfer in 2024. These are blessings way beyond your own labor, way beyond what you're trying to do for yourself. And God will do things like that for you. He'll give you amazing opportunities, but you've got to come back into His order. He said, 2024, come back to first love. Come back to first works. Come back to first things. Mm -hmm.